Hi, it's another episode of Secure Digital Life. Another day, another podcast. Russ Boschman and Doug White are here to talk to you today. Russ is over there about Internet of Things. You can't escape it. It's like the revenge of some kind of zombie equipment, and it's coming for you. So we thought we should talk a little bit about what is the Internet of Things. Welcome to Secure Digital Life. And you type in AAA porn or whatever it is you're typing in. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We, I was at a PG show. And I'm really okay. excited to be here. I'm glad you're here because somebody needs to know what's going on. That's right. Okay, so now, now somebody has to drink this. <laughs> it's another day. It's another episode. Yeah, he's looking at the wrong camera. You, oh, oh, you move my, you put my camera over here. Eh, there you cut. Go. Basically, forget you ever saw that. I, I think actually forgetting you ever saw that would really be a good idea at this point. Hi, Russ. Hi, Doug. How are you? I'm pretty good. I, I, I came back from skiing where it was 50 below zero and the wind chill, and, and all the pieces of me are still here. So awesome. that's, a, that's a good thing. Yeah, and, that's definitely great. Otherwise, and, I won't have a host. And skiing. I mean, I, when I was skiing, I got involved in the Internet of Things because I, I, was, I was skiing, and I realized that they track you. So you have a, you have a ski pass now, and it's oh. got RFID in it. Oh, interesting. And every time you get on a ski lift, they actually know you got on the ski lift. They know which one you got on, when you mm -hmm. got on it, how long it was, how long you were on it, and all this other kind of information. And I was like... Okay, here it goes again. So it's just sort of like all around you, you're getting surrounded by Internet of Things, and that stuff's moving into people's homes. Mm -hmm. So I think all of us have some kind of Internet of Things stuff in our house now. And that's, that's good and scary at the same time. Sure. I mean, it, it's like I, I'm a, I love convenience. So, you know, I love to be able to sit down and just say like, you know, Alexi. Open the door. Which, by the way, I changed her name to computer because Alexa was updated uh, last week in celebration of Star Trek's well, whatever I anniversary. I, well, I was, try I was trying to get Siri to call me like sexy Italian <laughs> stallion, and she wouldn't do it. She oh. was just like, sh she got mad and shut up and wouldn't talk for two And then I forgot I changed Alexa's name. So when I was walking to my office the other day, <laughs> I'm like, Alexa, turn on office lights. And she wouldn't answer. She's Alexa, turn on. And she wouldn't do it. Yeah, she's jealous. Yeah. yeah she's, so like, She's angry yeah, about that. Just, Moral of that story is don't forget so, that you change the computer's name before you try to talk to it. Yeah, well, it's, it's the same thing with, like, your date, you know. Well, that's like true, if yeah. You, you know, you, if you have your date and you, yeah. you say, hey, 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 Sarah, and, and it's really supposed to be Alexa, and then, oh. you know, it's like, yeah. my wife doesn't watch this show, so it's cool. Yeah, many situations, you know, you but, want to avoid like that. So. Exactly. So, so one of the things we wanted to talk about was why do we even care about the Internet of Things? Sure. And um, I, I care about it because, one, it's convenient. So this is why we do it. And I also care about it then because I'm paranoid. So, I mean, I've spent all my career looking at things and thinking about what happens when that light fixture falls on us, and is that a bad thing? And IoT is the same thing. I start looking at it, and the very first time I actually thought about IoT was with the Nest thermostats. Mm -hmm. And I started thinking, what if you could hack Nest thermostats and you could, you could turn the heat up in people's offices and turn the heat down in people's offices and cause all kinds of chaos? And so I started worrying about it a little bit and then I also started worrying about it because I heard this thing. And I was at this meeting with all these people that had like stars on their shoulders and all this stuff on their uniforms and things. And they started talking about chips. And they were talking about how that all the military equipment had motherboards mm -hmm. and Internet of Things type stuff in it. And w who made the chips? And everything was being controlled by these little chips, and I have a, I have a video I'm going to show you in a minute, but uh, all these chips were controlling everything about these pieces of military equipment, and somebody said, I think they're all made in China, and that got some really pale looks from people. <laughs> I mean, people were like, what? And they were like, well, what's on these chips? And I was like, I don't know, and it's interesting. I guess we could take some and look at them. So we're going to show you a, a quick uh, video that I made showing you some chips and what they look like and, and how they're in everything, and maybe even in your clothes. I, I don't know. You, you could touch. Don't, don't touch yourself. <laughs> so we're going to run that video now. Hi, this is Doug White in the lab. So... This is uh, my forensics lab, and I wanted to show you hands-on a couple of things about what we're talking about and why it's a problem. Now, obviously, everything that makes your life more convenient is cool, but 
there are some issues that we ought to deal with. Now, what I have here, and I already broke it, you can see the tamper-proof seal there has been broken. This is a, um, let me get this turned correctly, this uh, is a Linksys 54G, classic uh, home router. So this is something that pretty much everybody has had or seen or, or you know could have in their house. And it's not really much different than, than a lot of other uh, devices like this. And this is a gadget that's got some stuff on the back. So there's two uh, antenna loadouts. So this is where you would take these little uh, antenna loads and screw them into the system so that I'm, I'm losing focus there you got some switch ports here on this thing and, and then you got some other ports on it but I'm gonna, I actually took it apart so we can see inside of it so what this thing actually is and I'm gonna lay it down right there so you can see it uh, in the field uh, is a, a circuit board and that circuit board has all these things soldered onto it. So basically there's all kinds of stuff here that you could play with and people love to play with. But what we're interested in primarily is talking about chipsets. And I don't know if you can even see that. If you can see my little, uh, let me just use my Sharpie. I was gonna use a little laser pointer. Uh, it shows up better in some circumstances. I think it's so bright in here you might not, you can see it a little bit. That little, like that, that, these things. These things, here, and I'm gonna move that. Uh, you can see uh, this is a Broadcom chip. And that Broadcom chip, and I'm gonna pick it up and turn it over so you can actually read it right side up. I'm gonna bring it up real close there so you can see it. You can see it's a Broadcom chip and it's got some numbers on it. So uh, what those numbers represent is this particular chip and what was burned onto it. So the Broadcom company bought this chip. They may or may not have actually done anything to it. They may have just hired it done. So you take that chip and it has instructions on it. And those instructions are what end up controlling all the various functions. And you see there's, there's more than one. And you can actually see if you look closely then, I'm, I'm moving closely again, you see some little teeny ones. You see all these little chips, and there's, there's whole bunches of them here. And there's some more over here. And every one of those chips is some kind of a controller. And it has embedded on it what is called firmware. And you've probably heard that term at some point in time. And that firmware um, has, is an instruction set, so it's a computer program. But it, it's hard burn into these chips so that the factory they actually put this code in there and some of these kind of chips you could desolder them if you are very patient because if I don't know if you can see this because it's so close let's see how close we can get the focus all around this thing you can see all the little solders that went into this so could have been done by a robot it could have been done by a really really patient person um, you can see this one over here oh, figures never fails let me just silence that um, never fails that the phone rings when I'm doing these things. I, I, I forgot to turn it off. And you can see all the little solder pins on this. And if you turn this thing upside down, you can see on the bottom where stuff comes through and is soldered onto the bottom of the board. So the reason we're interested in this is this particular controller right here, this Broadcom controller, and one of these other controllers, um, hang on, I have to turn this around for a second so I can see it. This one, and this one, you can see the version on that one, 5.00.33 CS3522. Each of those chips has some specific purpose on this router. And one of those chips controls the Wi-Fi. So these two things here, you see this long coax cable coming around that's soldered into this one. And then these all jump in here and get managed by this. So the RF signals that are getting sent out of this thing are managed by the chipsets. And different chipsets do different things. Every single one of those chipsets was built by people. And that means that somewhere there, are, there was a human or humans who wrote the lines of instruction that went onto that chipset. So this is where all the controversy comes from. If in a perfect world, these chipsets would be rock solid and you could count on them. In the real world, these chipsets, you don't know what they do. And so we see these chipsets in everything. So as you start to get into the Internet of Things, you see chipsets like this being plugged into everything and anything. This is a computer motherboard. 
and it's an old one so it's a t-force and it's an old motherboard I grabbed out of my junk motherboard box and I have whole bunches of them and if you look and I'll try to pull this one up so you can see a little closer you see chipsets again like there is a networking chipset here is another kind of chipset and if you look closely there's some little teeny ones there and all of these things are controlling different components of this motherboard. These I was pointing to primarily deal with the network part of this. So what does this mean for us? Well, we're talking about it on the show, obviously, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time explaining all the issues. But the biggest issue I have with it is I don't know what's on this chip. And I have very little mechanism to determine, is this written correctly? And it's not controlled by our laws. So we can't really determine what this is. Now I can look this up. So I can take this thing right here and I can take, if it'll focus again, I can take this RTL 8100C 66277S1 and I can look this up on the internet and I may be able to find out that somebody has taken this chip off the motherboard and they have read it out so they can see what it does. And if they've done that, well guess what? They may find some kind of flaw in it because the person who put the chip together was probably not a security professional. They probably didn't worry about security because they were engineering. So all they did was build a chip and get it to work. And that's what programmers often do. And when we have that problem, sometimes programmers don't think about the holes in these systems. So because some of these chipsets now are accessible by wireless, that means that somebody can actually access what's in that chipset and cause it to do things remotely. Your thermostat that's Wi-Fi enabled has a chipset, or if it's not, it probably has a chipset anyway. Your doorbell that is uh, Wi-Fi enabled, your, the uh, valve stems on your car that are Wi-Fi enabled, they all have chipsets to enable this to happen. So that's a real quick look at two things and some of the chipsets. So we're going to talk about that on the show. Okay, thanks. And there, there you have it. I was looking at all that stuff in my secret lab, which is, which is hidden away with like, you know, really bright lights and all these things and no windows so anybody can see it. But the, the real reason we were talking about this and it became a bigger issue was Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and all these other kind of mechanisms because when it's just on a, on a device and you can't get to that device, so there's no way. I mean, it's like, you know, it's inside of a box or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's not as big of a threat. But when now, with all this, and, and, and Russ is going to tell us a little bit about Wi-Fi and Bluetooth here in a second, what happens is it means someone with a drone or someone with a phone or any other kind of device that's out there could conceivably jump in there and access this sitting in your driveway. They could access this sitting from somewhere else. So if they could start manipulating things that are on those chipsets, all of a sudden there's some real issues. So Russ is going to tell us about Wi-Fi and Bluetooth for a second. So... Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and, and some other new technologies like um, NFC um, are, are wireless communication protocols that uh, are used on a number of devices, a lot for IoT and, you know, in, in the case of Wi-Fi, for most, most computing technologies like this iPad sitting here on the, on the, on the, uh, on the tabletop. Um, Wi-Fi is the one that most people would remember, and that uses uh, uh, bands in the, in the realm of 2.4 gigahertz and uh, 5.8 um, it's just radio, right? Though. It's just I mean, radio. Yeah, it's, it's just radio, right? And it uses those bands to communicate or transmit and receive information uh, to and from devices. So that's the one that people are mostly uh, familiar with. Um, then you have Bluetooth, and Bluetooth is more of a shorter range um, uh, communication, wireless communication protocol. Like for instance, we have a, a Bluetooth keyboard that's sitting on this table right now, uh, and it uses um, Bluetooth. Uh, I think what version are they on? Three, maybe? I think it's three or yeah, something like sure. that. Uh, anyway, so the, the they're on version three, I believe, and it uses um, a short range. So you get m about 200, 250 feet, somewhere around there for, for Bluetooth uh, uh, communication, uh, meaning that the device can't be more than that many feet away from the right. receiver and, and the transmitter. Whereas in Wi-Fi, you can be, you know, depending on the, on the, uh, the, the standard of Wi-Fi you're using, you can be pretty far away. And how high you turn it and up. And how high you, uh, right. I, and, I had yep. one at my house and I kept turning it up because I was yep. trying to get to my office yep. from my house. Yep. And I kept turning up my antennas. Right. And they got, they were 
were they were running so high, I started getting worried about you know like that I was going to start cooking birds or things <laughs> as they flew through the signal because I was sure. like you know it's like microwaves sure. and, and I kept turning it yep. up and it was like yep. you know then I was like I wonder if I could get yeah. this past what they allow yeah you know and then I found out you could and and interestingly enough uh, funny that you say the microwaves is the Wi-Fi and including your cell phone uh, on on the 3G or 4G band uh, they're using the same frequent or similar frequencies to your microwave and so if if you remember back in the days of the cordless phones when you would stand next to your microwave and your microwave was turned on you would get a lot of static and interference that's because that was uh, destructive interference they were they were near the same frequency right. so think about that next time that you're using your phone uh, to communicate or when you turn people. the microwave on and all your networking goes down right. and, and, and you start yeah. going they say these things don't <laughs> leak but you know they do like, maybe yeah. I shouldn't stand so close yeah okay uh -huh. and and the newest uh, the newest protocol uh, is on on the iPhone 7 um, and also on um, the new uh, newer uh, Android models yeah there you go um, and that's NFC or near field communication and, and NFC is super ultra close so you can use uh, NFC devices that wi again wireless uh, but you have to use it to you have to touch the almost touch the screen right like this yep. uh, to, to, to use it and in fact I've got the Apple watch here and I, when I was in Australia a couple of months ago I used this to pay for everything so I didn't have to carry all my cards around with me uh, so I, you just step up and you touch tap yep. pay you know pay uh, what Apple Apple pay and Android pay yep. you know they use those uh, NFC style very um, cool technology so and, and all this stuff started getting into our homes because we want convenience. Right. So, uh, you know, you, and a lot of us are early adopters, so, mm -hmm. so I'm not as much of an early adopter as these guys because I'm too cheap. But, <laughs> you know, I mean, I see things like a thermostat, and I, I know you see cool thermostats. Like you go, you go to Lowe's and you see a cool thermostat and go, wow, it's so awesome, and you can control it with your phone. Uh, I was getting HVAC put in my office, and they were like, do you want the, the uh, Internet-enabled controllers? For the HVAC, I was like, oh. yeah. Hell yeah, yeah. Like, you have to ask that, really? <laughs> I was like, no, I want it. So I can use my iPhone, and I can actually control my HVAC in my office, even if I was in Australia, yep. which is kind of scary in a way, but I mm -hmm. can turn my heat on and off or accidentally do it and come back and find yep. out I set my thermostat on. So the way this stuff started getting into your life was just because of convenience. You uh, People love my, my wife, ha and I do too, we have valve stem uh, readers on our cars. And mm -hmm. so now when you have a low tire, mm -hmm. uh, you can see the tire pressure on inside when you're driving, and you can yep. see it going down and go, oh, I have a problem. I need to pull over. And again, it's like you don't even think about that. You're just like, well, give it, gimme, 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 right. gimme, gimme. And that's that's kind of where some of the security flaws start to leak in because those chipsets are sitting out there and you don't know what's on those chipsets. And there's really no like controls, regs, or anything else on how this stuff works. So uh, like uh, another thing that I saw was a, was a refrigerator. So, like, LG was LG, making yeah. refrigerators that have uh, cameras inside yep. of them. So, when you're at the grocery yep. store, you could actually, like, go to the grocery store and look inside your refrigerator. Yep. And I thought, well, that's kind of cool till somebody hacks it. Although yep. then, you know, somebody said, well, can they hack it? I was like, well, yeah, they can hack it. But yep. then I thought, oh, wow, hackers just saw my eggs. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, my God. But, I, I, you know, those refrigerators, too, then have controls. Make it cold, make it hot. So right. turn the refrigerator right. on deep freeze and right. set it to minus five Celsius right. and watch what happens to people's milk and all these or, kind of stuff. Or like we saw uh, several months ago where um, somebody uh, created a botnet versus on of IoT devices. Um, so literally people's refrigerators were sending out DDoS uh, you know, right. attacks to some... Central yeah, they, or they infected all of these, these IoT networks uh, and, and used those because now you're talking about billions of things. Right. It's like ants. Yep. You know, I mean, every, if every house has 20 or 30 of these things, and that's coming. I mean, you, you're talking about just a few years from now, you're going to have lots of this stuff in your home, even if you don't want it or you don't even know about it, unless you physically go around and disable it. And that's going to become a bigger problem, I think, because there are these issues of standards and they've really not been enforced. And, and our, law system, our, our law system, our legal system, has, is very slow. You know, I mean, I mean, yep. you're starting to talk about how long does it take to get a law? You remember that whole thing about how a bill becomes a law? Is like I'm just a bill. You know, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> he's not as old as I am. But there was these old cartoons about. It was called the uh, Schoolhouse Rock. Oh, Schoolhouse Rock. Yeah, 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 I, mean, yeah. I can't yeah. sing it. Come oh, on, come on. But. Uh, <laughs> Conjunction, junction, watch. Yeah, oh, see, so he does remember. This was like, I'm just a bill. I'm sitting on capital. <laughs> Don't remember yeah. that episode. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Well, we weren't going to win any awards for a <laughs> singing contest. Um, 
We, we can sing death metal, though. We oh, can, that's uh, fine. Schoolhouse Slayer. Rock. <laughs> Schoolhouse Rock death metal. Slayer does bills. Yeah. Mm. Ramstein. Oh, my God. Yeah. Okay, there you go. But, um, so one of the things that we've been talking about on some of the other shows on the network is about standards. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I thought of about standards was a long time ago, there were no electrical codes. And buildings burn down all the time because when they wired them, they used wire that was illegal. They had, I mean, you, everybody's, maybe you have, maybe you haven't. I've lived in apartments where they had those fuse boxes and people were putting coins in the fuse boxes. Oh, because man. We, we didn't want to buy a fuse, so you, you take <laughs> yeah. a, a quarter and you yeah. stick it in there. Whatever had resistance, right? Yeah, you, you better cover your hand if you do that. <laughs> you'll get shocked, as people have learned. But because those standards and codes didn't exist for anything, there were lots and lots of problems and a lot of people got hurt. And I think the same thing starts to sort of evolve around uh, Internet of Things, because as you put these things all over your house, maybe they don't start fires necessarily, but if they start to compromise your privacy, if they start to compromise your security, so your baby monitor, which has a chipset in it, mm -hmm. and your nanny cam, which has a chipset in it, is connected to your Internet, because I, you know, here's one I saw. This is a good Internet of Things thing. It was a ball that you could make roll around your house. Mm-hmm. And you could harass your pets while you were on vacation. And uh, this funny. friend of ours was like, she was chasing her dog around the house mm. with this thing from mm. like, you know, thousand miles away, which mm -hmm. was pretty cool. But you say, well, what if somebody's compromising that? What if they're using it to do something right. else? What if they're harassing your dog instead of you? Right. And that was, so that was one piece of it. Well, and, I, and I've got one that uh, in my office, I have um, a, an aquarium, a saltwater fish tank. Um, and I wanted to look at an, an internet connected fish feeding uh, device so that when I'm away, I can feed my fish and not rely on a human to do so. So I installed, of course, a security camera, and I can log into the security camera in my office from my cell phone. But the problem with the security camera is it has a uh, output, a speaker input, uh, and a microphone, uh, excuse me, a microphone input and a speaker output. So I can actually talk through it uh, in my office. Now, I also, as I said earlier, I have, um, I have Amazon Echo. So what we found out in our security class last semester that, that we, uh, we were teaching is uh, I could actually initiate a Alexa from outside using the security camera as a microphone that be our speaker and that became a problem because people the students were Alexa yeah un the, unlock the door <laughs> the, Alexa the students were, were hacking in it was just a demonstration but they were hacking in and they're like Alexa you know order another <laughs> uh, another you know set of tied laundry detergent and and she did uh -huh. and that was you know so I had to go through and delete all those orders on Amazon but they were being funny and but this is a serious concern oh well, it could be yeah I mean and somebody could use that as a, a just an almost disastrous kind of problem uh, to, to have that happen if, if you could do that. And then we were talking about this the other day about literally standing outside on the porch mm -hmm. and yelling, Alexa, unlock the door because you're seeing door locks that are controlled by your iPhone. And, and I saw one that was really into the, you know, like, oh, the, the fact that your, your fingerprint and all this stuff was in your phone so it was very much more secure. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what if they could just literally yell through the window, Alexa, unlock the door yep. and the doors all pop. And so they put controls in place in that. But there are no standards right now. Right. So there's no codes, there's no standards. Right. So the truth is, is you don't know what's on these chipsets. And you hear things that are called Trojans. and Not condoms. No, not condoms. He has a dirty mind. It's, this is a sick show. I'm out. No, but um, <laughs> I know what you were thinking because you have dirty minds too, yeah. all of you. I know you do. But um, you do. I can tell. We're getting a note about it right now. The FCC, is, yeah. there's a note on Shut the screen down. that yeah. says you're fired. Shut it down. Yep. It's just like this episode, you'll have an episode of Andy Griffith's show will be, be showing Or we up. could have Trojan sponsor the show. Oh, there you go. Trojan man. Yeah, Trojan um, man. But, but um, these things called Trojans are actually things that are embedded in chipsets. So uh, a, a long time ago, they called them maintenance hooks. And programmers actually left ways for them to get into the system when they were writing code because they thought, well, as I get the system up and running, I, they'll call me and say it's broken. And I used to do this too. And you had these things, backdoors, Trojans, maintenance hooks, whatever you're going to call them. And you don't know that they're not there. But guess what? Some 12-year-old kid is going to figure that out because they're going to sit there at their house and they're in their parents' basement and they're bored and you know, they can't drive, they can't get a date because they can't drive. And so they get the soldering iron out and start taking chips off the board. And, or you don't even have to do that. You can use little probes yeah. to do it. And, uh, you know, when you're bored, what else have you got to do? So to wrap it up, 
Next week on the Internet, uh, on the Internet of Things show, uh, on part Secure two. Digital part Life, two. we're going to do part two. We're going to bring some Internet of Things uh, items into the show and show you how some of them work, like hues maybe. We've yep. got some of those. We've got some door locks. Mm-hmm. We've got some thermostats. We've got some controllers. So we're going to bring those things into the show and show you how that kind of stuff actually works in practice because you maybe want to get into the Internet of Things, and yeah. that's a really cool thing. I, I love that stuff. It's lots of fun. So thanks for joining joining us today on the podcast. This is Doug White and and Russ. Take care. Bye.